Well, the lesson of all this is clear. If you want successful adjustment, elect Prime Minister Dombrovskis. <laughs> One clear and overwhelming lesson. Uh, we have a Swedish coach for the national women's soccer team that's doing so well in Germany. Why not? In any event, um, I'd like to start by putting two questions to the Prime Minister. One is to ask you to go a little further and talk about something you did not really talk about, namely, how were you able to do it politically? What enabled you to achieve this remarkable adjustment when people did not know that it would succeed in a couple of years and which had such deep impact on your society? What enabled you in that political climate to pull it off? And then secondly, looking forward, Simon has raised a challenge, really, to your clear objective of joining the Euro within three years. Um, he's raised questions surrounding the current uh, uh, instabilities in the Eurozone and the outlook for it. So tell us whether you are still convinced that's the right thing to do, and if so, why? So give us a little more of the political history and a little more of the policy going forward on that critical variable of joining the Eurozone. Well, uh, thank you very much for those uh, questions. Uh, so to start with the uh, first one on this uh, political part. Well, uh, one thing which uh, was uh, uh, quite uh, important during this uh, crisis uh, was that uh, one, once discussing all those fiscal adjustment measures, we were uh, uh, taking quite a let, lot of effort to get our social and uh, cooperation uh, partners uh, on board. Uh, so we formed uh, what was called a reform management group with uh, trade unions, with uh, employers' confederation, with chamber of commerce, uh, a local governments union to actually discuss those measures which are to be uh, implemented. So this fiscal adjustment uh, we did in uh, June uh, uh, 2009, which was probably most uh, difficult at all, uh, was uh, co-signed by uh, all those uh, social and cooperation partners and even by Pensioners uh, Federation because uh, that one was also uh, 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 discussing uh, uh, or foreseeing pension cuts which were implemented but then uh, uh, rejected by the Constitutional Court. Uh, so. But uh, not that they uh, wanted later to know about uh, this uh, uh, agreement and uh, to not that they were not criticizing the specific measures, but at least uh, to the extent also government social partners were on board, which was important, and at least they were not calling for strikes and uh, some uh, disruptive actions. So I think that was the uh, first Im important factor, and in fact there was a broad agreement among uh, shareholders or, or stakeholders, so to say, that uh, uh, we uh, must deal with this uh, crisis, we must reduce uh, budget deficit. So the question was then on how exactly to do this. Of course, then uh, there you can uh, deal with all, all kind of uh, fancy ideas how to deal with this, uh, but uh, still uh, there was not so much debate that somebody was uh, would be questioning in uh, principle that uh, some other strategy should be chosen or, or, or something. And uh, second, I think also this uh, social safety network which we introduced was uh, helping. First, because it was a social program for those mostly affected by the crisis. And second, it also was sending a, a signal to the society while doing all those fiscal austerity, while doing all those uh, cuts, uh, uh, there uh, is still uh, 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 taken care of those uh, who are mostly affected by crisis. I think those were the two uh, key uh, factors. So all in all, there was a degree of understanding in the society that uh, uh, we need uh, to do de to deal with this uh, crisis, and uh, also as election results later showed that uh, people quite clearly rejected this populism and different kind of populist ideas which were there. 
uh, uh, before the elections and instead voted for stability, so to say. Then on the second question on uh, uh, Eurozone, well, uh, first, uh, yes, it's still part of our uh, strategy to meet master criteria in 2012 in order to um, be able to join Eurozone as of January 1, 2014. And uh, we do not see this uh, crisis so much as a Euro crisis or Eurozone crisis. It's uh, rather a financial and economic crisis in some Eurozone countries, which were not uh, following basic macroeconomic rules, as Latvia was not following basic macro uh, macroeconomic rules, and that's how we went into trouble. And I think uh, Eurozone is also and EU is uh, taking its lessons from this crisis, so uh, sanction and uh, control mechanisms had been reintroduced in order to ensure that Eurozone countries should follow their own rules on fiscal discipline and uh, macroeconomic uh, balances and, and so on. And uh, so we wouldn't expect a similar crisis uh, returning uh, to the Eurozone. Of course, we still need to sort out uh, this one, which is not going to be easy, yeah, but uh, uh, from what we see uh, as the EU and Eurozone's response to the crisis, it seems that lessons are being learned and adequate safeguards are being uh, placed in the system. We will hope. Okay, the floor is open. We've only got a few minutes, so I'll uh, ask several questions uh, to be compiled for the panel and then we'll come back. So make it brief, go to the microphone, uh, or here's the hand mic, announce yourself, and uh, fire away. Uh, Barry Wood, RTHK. I would like to ask um, uh, Simon and uh, Mr. Griffith and uh, the Prime Minister in particular. It seems to me that uh, one of the advantages, the powerful advantage that Latvia had is that you were a communist country, everybody had low living standards, they, that was fresh in their mind, and they wanted to join Europe. So that mentally really help the adjustment. Will austerity work in countries like Greece, Portugal, Ireland, and whoever else comes along? Because they're not moving towards something, they're trying to protect something, and people, just as your pensioners didn't want to do it, they don't want to do it. Will austerity work in the Eurozone? Okay, are there other questions? Yeah, in the back. Thank you. Good afternoon. Rob Colorina, AIAC Investment. Uh, just uh, two quick questions. One for the Prime Minister. Um, currently, how many international banks are operating within the country? And then to the, um, uh, to the IMF presentation, um, you had mentioned the restructuring um, and uh, I think some sort of discount that was taken by some of the international bondholders or the consideration of. But if that, that was not the case, I was just curious as to what was, what was sort of a range of the discount to face value. Okay, next question. Uh, yes, <clears throat> Brian Carlson from Intermedium, former ambassador to Riga. Uh, I wonder if the Prime Minister would say something about what steps he either has taken or thinks should be taken to prevent uh, these, these sorts of overheated uh, credit expansion and so forth that got Latvia into the problem that will prevent those things from happening in the future. Are there institutional changes needed? Okay, those are three questions. Uh, I think, Mr. Prime Minister, all were aimed at least partly to you. Uh, okay, so I will uh, start uh, answering them uh, uh, one by one. On uh, this first question on uh, uh, being a uh, former uh, communist country versus not being a former communist country, uh, I think that's not uh, not a key issue in in this debate. Already we had. Uh, uh, discussed earlier today uh, several other countries which had gone through the substantial fiscal consolidation and adjustment like Sweden, like Finland, like uh, Netherlands, uh, some other countries and uh, uh, none of them really uh, had a similar uh, background. So it's rather uh, the question of uh, uh, 
willingness uh, to face a problem and willingness to uh, solve the problem and and, uh, and and that's maybe what's uh, most uh, uh, most uh, uh, most of the difference so uh, and uh, uh, if you are to discuss this uh, situation in uh, Greece or other southern European countries well, uh, they will not have so much of uh, choices because uh, we had been debating here very much uh, uh, to, dev to devaluate or not, whereas uh, unless uh, Greece or Ireland or Portugal wants to quit the uh, Eurozone, they do not have this option. They will have to go for this internal devaluation and uh, at certain uh, stage uh, they will have to face it. Well, they are basically already uh, facing it. Uh, then on... Uh, uh, second question on uh, international loan banks in uh, Latvia. In fact, there are quite a few, uh, a dozen or so. Uh, mainly those are uh, Swedish banks or Scandinavian banks. We also have some Norwegian, Danish, uh, Finnish uh, banks, uh, some uh, Austrian banks, uh, quite a few Russian banks. So, in, in fact, uh, international bank uh, sector presence is is there uh, it's uh, s those banks stayed uh, in latvia or, or or baltics in general also during the crisis and right now we are also preparing the sale of uh, citadella bank which was like a good out part of the parex and uh, certainly would uh, like to attract some international uh, strategic uh, investor to this well, uh, frankly speaking, preferably not from Sweden because we already have so many Swedish banks. So we would prefer to have some non-Swedish bank. But uh, uh, so uh, uh, we would expect uh, uh, probably some new uh, international bank uh, then coming into uh, Latvia. Uh, then on this uh, question of our heating and credit expansion, well, uh, that's not an immediate concern now, I must say. We would like, actually, in fact, to have somewhat more of credit expansion. Yeah? Uh, but um, should this come, uh, in fact, in spring 2007, there was quite a good plan prepared for dealing with... Uh, 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 at that time, uh, it was called anti-inflation plan, but 70% of this was devoted to how to re uh, reduce or how to uh, stop uh, domest domestic de demand from excessive expansion. And there were some uh, good ideas, which I think uh, helps not only to deal with uh, some uh, 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 credit expansion, which, which also helps with uh, fighting gray economy, like obliging banks to calculate customers' credit worthiness based on their legal incomes, preventing from possibilities to uh, use also some possible gray incomes for that uh, purposes, uh, limiting the share of uh, 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 or the per percentage of uh, the loan to certain percentage of the collateral, 80%, 70%, something like this, because uh, before crisis banks were lending over 100%, and a range of uh, other measures. So in fact, if you want to uh, make uh, this uh, credit expansion slower there are quite a few measures which government can take and and uh, implement but currently we are not uh, particularly worried with the uh, credit expansion in fact more would be welcome okay we're almost to our witching hour let me ask if our other panelists anders mark simon have any response to the questions or further comments simon just just uh just, just one uh, to make sure I understand uh, correctly. Um, bondholders and banks did not lose any money in Latvia, right. uh, leaving aside banks that needed to be recapitalized. That was yeah. because that's an equity investment. But in terms of creditor protection, am I right in saying that Latvia is a case of 100% complete protection in in the context of the program that we've been discussing? Uh, if I may to comment on this, uh, well, in fact, banks were losing uh, quite a substantial uh, uh, amounts of money because of non-performing loans. And that uh, was exactly what was happening in the uh, private sector. And at some stage, the percentage of non-performing loans was close to 20%, if I'm not mistaken. So it was uh, really uh, quite a substantial losses. And in fact, just this year, 
banking sector in Latvia returned to profits after running uh, three years of uh, losses. So they were uh, participating through this way. They, they didn't lose money on Latvian uh, sovereign bonds or anything because they, we were uh, servicing them. Right, just to clarify, I mean, sovereign bondholders were met in full, also private bank bondholders were met in full, and that, that's the issue I was raising. As the Prime Minister points out, there also Swedish banks um, took losses in Latvia, but they uh, accepted that and they recapitalized, they met that, so they stayed in. One of the questions is PSI, will banks stay in or will they just leave the keys and walk out? No, they stayed in and they, they kept their money in, and that's also helped. Uh, abate the crisis. Okay, Anders, you get the final word. Thank you. Uh, quickly responding to Simon, uh, beautiful uh, uh, points all three uh, you made. Uh, I'm of course totally with you on uh, you need to do something about the tax system in this uh, country. But on the Eurozone, for Latvia, liquidity is uh, vital. Latvia had no access to liquidity. That was really what caused the, the big output. Uh, the, there you have part of the answer to your first question. On the Eurozone, of course, I totally agree with you that it's scary and that the incentives are wrong. Uh, I'm just a little bit more optimistic than you presuming that that will uh, be changed substantially now. Uh, and uh, I think that the point we can make about which countries that have undertaken uh, substantial restructuring. Uh, these are all countries that have serious crisis in the had a serious crisis in the last 30 years. The sad fact is that countries don't, or nations don't seem to be able to learn intellectually, but only from crises that they have in living memory. Uh, are you recommending that Sweden join the Eurozone, Anders? Yes, I am. That will be the topic for next time. Uh, I want to thank all four speakers. I want, to, <laughs> I, want to, I want to particularly congratulate Anders and the Prime Minister on the book. I want to particularly congratulate the Prime Minister on his success. I hope you'll be back a year from now for your third annual visit to the Institute to keep us abreast of how the story is unfolding, and we trust, hope, and expect that it will continue to be this huge success. Thank you, and once again, congratulations.